Hey friends, welcome back to Essentially Jesse. Today we're gonna to be talking about 10 of my favorite date night fragrances. So let's get into the video. So today we're talking about 10 of my favorite date night fragrances. These are all designer fragrances, close to or under $100 each. The first one I wanna start with is the one with the coolest bottle. This is Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. This is Ligere, and that means light. So this is the lighter version of the original Good Girl. So the original Good Girl is full of Tonka and is really a heavy hitter. The interesting thing is I actually purchased these in a set around Christmas, or maybe I got them as a gift, I can't remember. And I wanna say, no, I purchased them. I wanna say it was around $20, $25. So I wasn't sure which one I would prefer. So I got the little samples, which I always recommend doing, tried them out. I actually really liked both of them. Honestly, it was months before I made the purchase of the larger size. This is a very large size. I want to say this is for it is almost three fluid ounces so this is a really good size bottle and it's just cute so anyway um this fragrance is a sweet white floral and it is woody and aromatic as well it was released in 2018 and the opening is let me spray it lemon orange bergamot and ylang ylang which sometimes i like and sometimes i don't but this fragrance is beautiful so then it dries down in the mid to orange blossoms tuberose jasmine a little bit of rose but i don't get a ton of rose this is definitely not a rose fragrance and then the base the dry down is dulce de leche hands down um it's got caramel and tonka in it it's really good it's a little bit lighter and softer than the original but it is one of my all-time favorite date night fragrances. So the next one that I love for date night is Kaoli Deja Vu White Flower 57. So this bottle is beautiful. Obviously, I love it. This is a white floral, as it says. It's warm. It's, um, it's really pretty, but it is a true white floral. So if you're not a white floral fan, this one is not the one for you. <clears throat> this is not gourmand at all. I would say that the Good Girl Gone Bad kind of leans gourmandish. This one has sandalwood, fruit, nectarine. It has some jasmine, tuberose, patchouli. I don't get a ton of the patchouli. <clears throat> um, gardenia and Tahitian vanilla. The dry down on this is pretty. I will say that this only lasts about four hours-ish on my skin and then I have to reapply. So I usually take this one with me whenever I take it out for date night. The next one that I'm excited to share is The Only One by Dolce & Gabbana. And I did a review on this one earlier, but this is an oriental floral. This is definitely gourmand. It's a little bit powdery, but it doesn't really bother me. A lot of fragrances that are powdery, I'm not crazy about, but in this one, the caramel really stands out a lot and I like it. This one is definitely beast mode, so don't overspray it. And that is Dolce & Gabbana, The Only One. The next fragrance I'd like to share with you guys is Dolce & Gabbana, The Only One Intense. So the cool thing about this is it has coconut in it. Everyone knows I love coconut. It is a really summery, even though it's in this black bottle and it is, I might say unisex. So I did a comparison video on this one and The Only One, the original. So you'll have to check out that video for my winner. But this one is a great date night fragrance. It looks like a date, it's beautiful. I love this one. It's a little bit lighter actually than the um, original version. My next fragrance is Coco Mademoiselle. And this is the intense version. So this is definitely a good date night scent. But it is a heavy hitter for sure. This is beast mode all the way. This is a very elegant fragrance. Um, I actually bought the larger size and then didn't really realize that it was going to last so long. I did not need the larger size because at, although I wear it, it takes one, maybe two sprays and you're good for the evening. It's citrusy, it's balsamic, it definitely has patchouli in it. So it's really nice that it's kind of a more even grown up version of Coco Mademoiselle, the original. This one is heavy on the patchouli and tonka. The bottle by Coco is, uh, by Chanel is obviously iconic, just the silhouette of it. It's beautiful. This is great 
for the office if you are very daring. Maybe the boss of the company could wear this during the day, but for the most part, it's just date night. The next fragrance I wanted to share with you guys is YSL Black Opium. And I think at some point we've all smelled this or one of the flankers for it. This is the EDP version of it, the Eau de Parfum. So this is gonna be the stronger version. Unfortunately for me, it isn't beast mode. It is right when you first put it on, it is very strong. But then after maybe two or three hours, it really dries down and kind of fades away or becomes more of a skin scent. So you would want to pack this one away in your purse if you're going on a long date. This is very sweet. It's a gourmand vanilla coffee sweet. Um, it's fun and playful. This one is probably more youthful. It was released in 2014. It has pear, orange blossom, pink pepper, licorice, it also has the patchouli and vanilla in it, which is basically what it dries down to. The patchouli in this is almost not recognizable or not as stout, certainly as what is in the Mademoiselle Intense. This is a beautiful bottle. I got the smaller size. I'm honestly glad that I did. I just love all these fragrances so much, but this one is probably a younger fragrance. So if you're wanting to go out and be fun and playful, maybe first date fragrance, this would be great. The next fragrance I wanted to talk about is Prada's Candy Night. The thing that I love, well, this is beautiful. It's pink and it goes to blue, ombre, but I like this because I feel like it is more mature version of Prada Candy and it also lasts a little bit longer on my skin. So this is a gourmand cacao, but it's almost a little bit fresh too. The iris, I think, in the bitter orange in the opening makes it a little fresher because the iris makes it powderier. This is totally also safe for the office. This is a really pretty fragrance, a really cute bottle. I get the caramel and the chocolate in the dry down. And again, I just love the cute bottle. I feel like this is youthful and energetic and sweet. The longevity on this, like I said, I feel like it's better than the original Prada Candy, but it's not beast mode by any means. So uh, you might wanna carry this in your purse if you're going out for like all day, but I think that this is day date appropriate, day date appropriate as well. This next fragrance that I wanted to talk about is by Erin and it's Hibiscus Palm. I did a Sephora haul video that included this and I loved it so much. I really feel like this is a great summer date night fragrance. It has floral, coconut, has, there's the coconut again. It's sweet, it's vanillic. It actually came out in 2017, but I don't know how long Sephora has actually been carrying this brand. Um, this brand is actually owned by Estee Lauder. So it has lotus, hibiscus, palm leaf, ginger. This has Ylang Ylang in it too, but I don't smell it too much. This dries down to a beautiful coconut vanilla musk and it's just gorgeous. I'm really glad that I got this size so that I can stick it in my purse and take it with me. But this is a great summer date night fragrance and I feel like we'll be in summerish weather for the next month or two, so that's exciting. The next fragrance that I wanted to share with you guys is obviously one that I love because it's almost empty. This one is a heavy hitter. It has taken me quite some time to put almost all of it away. But this is C, the original by Giorgio Armani. This has patchouli and vanilla in it. It's beautiful. It was released in 2013. The perfumer, um, Christine, she also is the head perfumer, I believe, for Hermes right now. But this is a stout fragrance. It is really, really beautiful. And it lasts all night for date night. This is, the longevity on this is incredible. It has black currant and freesia, may rose, but then it really dries down to patchouli and vanilla. Um, it's a really interesting fragrance. I don't know that I would blind buy this fragrance if you've never smelled it before but this is not for the faint of heart and this is not for someone who doesn't love fragrance because this will knock your socks off if you overspray. So be careful with that. But I just love the packaging. I think it's really unique and interesting. There are multiple flankers for this, but this one is by far my favorite, especially for date night. The next fragrance and final fragrance in my top 10 is Ariana Grande's Cloud. Now, I don't like the packaging 
obviously. It's a little juvenile to me, but the juice inside is worth it. And this, I believe, comes in under $50. I want to say $44 for the one ounce. I can't remember which sizes this comes in. Um, but it has lavender in it. And I just love it. And it has coconut in it, but it's great. It's playful. It's a floral fruity gourmand. It was released in 2018. And like I said, I'm not crazy about the packaging. So the top is a cloud, the bottom is a cloud. It actually comes out of this, but it, um, and stands up on its own, but I keep it in here basically to protect it from not getting knocked over, but it's gorgeous. Like I said, it has lavender, pear, bergamot, coconut. It has this whipped cream vibe. That's really cool. Honestly, it's happy, sweet, it layers well. I honestly feel like it would layer well with several of the other date night fragrances, but I feel like this would be great for a day date or a night date. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my 10 date night designer fragrances. Please hit the subscribe button and also click that little notification bell to be notified of future videos. Smell you later.